Nice. Hello, welcome to another episode of Anatomy of the Climb, the series where we analyze movement and anatomy in order to learn how to climb better and safer. And smarter. So um, this is a climb called Great White. It's a V6 in Joe's Valley, which is in uh, Utah. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and the reason we chose this one is because as we were all climbing on it, we realized there's a bunch of different betas. We We'll look at three different ways to kind of finish the climb, like the, the midsection and the very end, we all did a little bit differently. So it'd be fun to break down those three different ways. Yeah, so the first video we showed uh, was obviously not one of us, one of the guys. It was our friend Jen crushing it in her Halloween costume, yeah. uh, which was pretty great. Um, but we got a couple of requests on the last video to feature more female climbers. Um, so we wanted to add that in there as well. So we're going to talk about her beta as well. Yeah, um, talk about that one at the end. Yeah, yeah. So the main, the bulk of the video is going to be um, us three guys doing it three different ways. Um, yeah. It should be pretty interesting. We'll do some side by side comparisons. Yeah, and then we'll show her like super flexible beta as well because it just looks really cool. Yeah, she's strong. All right, so we're going to jump into the side by side comparison of the beta that I use, the beta that Jason used, and the beta that our friend Bailey used. It should be pretty interesting. Yeah. So the first move I I want to point off right at the bat, just because we talked about this in our last climbing video, the shoulder itself is in a lot of like actual internal rotation um, as we go into that hand position you'll notice like our hands you can kind of see it on mine a little bit more the hand now it's facing out towards us so we get that complete internal rotation which puts a little bit more strain on the external rotators um, and that internal rotation with that overhead reach puts us in a little bit more of like a pinchy situation for the shoulder. It is important for your stability of your rotator cuff to have a strong like external rotator group so that infraspinatus and teres minor. But yeah, so my recommended training for this would be to help keep the external rotator strong, especially at that 90 degrees. And there's that sword exercise or that D2 flexion or any lower trapezius strengthening. Cool, yeah, super good to know if you are having issues with this kind of this kind of movement or if this kind of movement gives you shoulder pain, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so let's move on to the next part. So not nothing too crazy still, we're still on super huge jugs. Moving on to the next fun part, there we go. One, two, three, bam. Yeah. So this, I, I really like this move because it, it brings up kind of like almost an irony in our anatomy. This move where we're like really extended like this actually like puts a lot of pressure on the front of our shoulders if there's weakness in the back of our shoulders. Because right now, especially with that hand like pulling in, there's so much pull through here. There's actually a lot of tension created like pulling forward on the shoulder. And so if you don't have good stability in your rotator cuff to kind of stabilize that and keep that shoulder pulled like down and back as well, then it can actually cause a little bit of strain and stress on the shoulder. So when you go like that far reached out and you have that load on the shoulder, again, having strength with that external rotator and that lower trap in this position can prevent a lot of anterior shoulder pain. So we're noticing a little bit of a theme here in that shoulder yeah. strength is very important. Yeah. Even when you're climbing on jugs, very important for yeah. stability. Absolutely. Uh, you're gonna notice as we get further on in the climb here that the different beta we use, the reason it's so much different is because we're creating force in different directions mm -hmm. with our feet and our hands. And that's gonna make certain moves much easier than others. And it's gonna make certain moves harder. Um, so it should be pretty interesting to see. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw on the screen a little bit and we'll point it out, but um, keep that in mind, uh, direction of force that you're creating with your hands and your feet. All right, so this next move, we all kind of come in and match in a different way. So it's a little bit hard to see my feet. Thanks a lot, Jason. 
crappy video you got of me. I am a professional <laughs> photographer, <Terrible>. videographer, <laughs> filmmaker, extraordinaire. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much, though, because you can still see the, the important parts, which are, you can see I have a left toe over here. So you have the same toe, like, right now that Bailey does same on the toe. right, but you are out on the left. Whereas Bailey and I, to match, we are both double toe hooks. Yeah. So you're single toe hook with the the left foot when you went to match. Yeah. Why? And you've also got the toe hook down there. Um, so I'm pushing pushing sort of this way with my toe here, which is pushing into my arm over here. And that is basically taking, it's putting more weight onto my left arm and onto that left hand. And so by putting more weight on my left arm, it's, I guess it's less of a core move than what yeah. you're doing. You're having to core up with the double toes more. Yeah. So that was, which was fine. Like for me, when, when I was going through that, cause as I did that move, as long as my right was good, that as long as I had that nice right toe hook and I engaged the core, I was going to basically create this line of force from my left hand through that right toe. So like very different in that sense where I just relied a little bit more oops, sorry, on uh, on core strength than than anything else. Yeah. One not necessarily better than the other. It's just a different way of doing it. Yeah. Um, I will say the reasoning uh, for me doing this toe is also just to try to stay as low on this edge as possible, which makes that hold feel better. Well, here, here's another thing, too, as you say that. So if you think about the angle of this rock right now, um, your hold, the way you have it, you're coming more directly down mm -hmm. onto this. So you're actually creating more friction and whatnot. Whereas for us, as we go out with that double toe, we're coming away from it a little bit more. You can see both those hands, like for Bailey and I, are both coming away a little bit. So that means we're gonna end up using a little bit more like of that kind of crimp that was there and less friction like you have. So yeah, that actually, that makes sense. So if we go back and watch Bailey in the middle here, he gets his heel up and crosses over. Um, so that heel is gonna help him unweight his left hand there where it was before over here and bring it over here. The He's obviously pulling in with his heel, um, which is pulling his body up. So his force is pulling down like that which is pulling his body up well it's a nice voice crack yeah <laughs> um but again that's just that heel hook's going to make it easier for him to do that cross way up there um and it's just a little bit easier that yeah. way but we're using jason and i are using these toes uh, <laughs> to push us this way to do the cross so not a huge difference but just an interesting difference in force there um if you want to get good at heel hooking my recommendation, Nordic hamstring curls. Mm. So good. Mm. And hip mobility, right? You got to have good hip mobility to do heel hooks. Yeah, you do have to have good hip mobility to do heel hooks. Which I think we talked about in the last video, but it's definitely an underrated uh, exercise Yeah, which, to do. which you saw with Jen because her mobility is like so good. It just makes it so easy. So then that also means a good stretch for that is going to be that pigeon pose. If you're keeping that tibia like... Um, parallel or cross your body and not letting your foot just tuck in a little bit. And that's in our hip mobility video as well. Yeah, and you can see Bailey's using nice heel hook uh, technique here because his toe right there is pointing out like that. <laughs> and if he was not doing good heel hook beta, his toe would be like pointing over here and he would just be sliding off the wall. Yeah. Let's see what happens next. So we're all setting up for the next move here. We cross. Time to fly. Yeah, and what do we do? It's just so cool. Like the directions of force that you create for this are just perfect for what you're doing because this one's going to propel you up and your left one is going to push you across, which you'll see. I mean, we should just we should just watch that. Like, And that's, I mean, that's your direction. That was the force that you created was moving up into the right. So you had both your feet like perfectly set for that. With mine... I'm gonna create that force coming, like I'm using my toe hook just to keep me closer to the wall and then all my force is gonna come across. Whereas um, you'll see with like Bailey, that unloading doesn't, it doesn't happen the same because he's dependent so much more still on that heel. 
Unload. Oh, yeah. So you saw the big movement to the right. I think if you're going to do this beta where you move out right, like you and Bailey do, I don't think this heel hook is a good idea because, again, look, look at this arrow here. You're trying to move to the right, but this heel is pulling your body that way. And so that, you know, obviously those arrows are not going in the right direction. Whereas if you look at this toe is pushing me this way, like Jason said, and this toe that you can't really see, unfortunately, is pushing me up and I'm trying to go directly up that way. So it's good. Um, so this is just where that heel, I think, is actually holding Bailey back a little bit. Um, and you're going to see that when he goes when he goes out for the right hand move, he actually goes to an intermediate right there. Um, and it's sort of a like a lungy move a little bit. He sort of catches it and then he goes to another one and it's pretty, it's a little bit desperate um, because that heel is still pulling him back. And so is his yeah. hand really too. Yeah. Pay attention to the force of um, the direction of force that you're creating with your feet and it can help you out a lot. Yeah. Um, that makes the beta that you did made that move significantly easier, yeah. I think. And then another one. Those external rotators, guys, like the power that he had was in his like right arm, like in the left hamstring. And that is that mm, that 90 degrees external rotation with abduction. It's a good exercise to do. We have those in several of our videos, I yeah. think. Yeah, it might be important for something. You can do them with bands. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue. Um, so back here, we, we all have heels up, but obviously I'm in a slightly different position. Yeah, you... You're already in that like position we want to be at is getting the right hand over. So it's just quick and easy. Yeah. So you can see here what I was talking about earlier, where that little bit of extra power in the beginning, if you're watching me right now, just the climb is basically done at this point. So yeah. And, and so like, you'll see like what we're trying to do, like we're trying to figure out basically how to eventually get our right hand to where his right hand is. Cause you'll see once our right hand gets there as well, it's done. Yeah. But like Bailey kind of goes to the right around it. I try and stick around to the left around it. Neither of us are quite there yet. And then Bailey gets it and then I get it. And you see literally as Bailey gets the right hand, it was like a millisecond later, basically He'll get the right hand where it needs to be. Not yet, not yet. Boom. Right when he gets it there, which is where like where Emil had it, it goes. And then you'll see um, in just a second as I get it, boom. Now I'm in that right spot. And then I'm just going to stand up off of that as well. A couple of things I noticed actually. But so when you're both here in a similar position, not exactly the same, but Jason comes in and slaps that hold. So why was that sort of a dynamic movement is because uh, he's got his hand over here holding on and then he's got this heel over here that's pulling his body that way. Um, and so he wants to, his left hand is on and his left heel is on and he wants to move his right hand. Um, and so he doesn't have, you don't have anything to take the weight off of your right hand basically. So you have yeah. to kind of come in come in dynamically well and and all the force that i had was was traveling down this way so i have nothing to prevent that movement so i just have to catch it and you see that small little weight shift mm -hmm. um from like left to right as i fall in so if i hadn't hit that right hand i definitely would have fallen off the climb yeah but at least you do have this hand facing that way so you've got this nice opposition yeah. between right here yeah and right here there's a, an alternative thing you could have done there with your right heel that could have made that move a little bit easier. And Bailey actually demonstrates this pretty soon as he fishes for the foot here. Boom. There he goes. He gets, even though his left hand is in a different position, it doesn't really matter at this point um, because he gets that right heel and it's going to take the weight off of his right hand. Mm -hmm. And then he can come in pretty casually to that right hand. So um, again, the direction of force, using that heel to take weight off your hands makes things a lot easier. The hip mobility part, because if we watch again with Bailey, as he switches to that right uh, heel, yeah. he lets go of the left. So he kind of fishes for that. But as he does that, the moment that right heel touches, the left heel comes off. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's, you know, the way that he was positioned or maybe just because the hand wasn't on the same side. But that's what's so cool about 
um, about the way that Jen does it with the double heel because then she's able to create that compression and can hold on to either side. Yeah, let's uh, check it yeah. out. She's just able to create, you know what, we got to get the right color here. <laughs> able to create that compression like in with the left and in with the right. And then she's nice and stable. Like there wasn't any like real body rock when she went to like move those hands up. She just gets that in and just casually gets Super it in casual. and casually gets it around until she's ready to top the climb out. The main thing to take away here is just remember to pay attention to the direction of force you're creating with your feet and your hands. Even if you're not really paying attention to where your hands or your feet are on a climb, they are creating force or dragging you down in some way. Um, so especially if you get a video of yourself, it makes it really easy to see um, where that force is being created. And if you notice that your feet are pushing you in the wrong direction, they're not pushing you in the direction that you want to go, then you could probably make some beta adjustments. And, you know, or be like a good climbing partner or like spotter because that heel hook beta wasn't working for me. And it was actually, I think, you who started talking about not using it and just kind of abandoning. Mm -hmm. And that's when I switched to pushing off of that left toe and using the right toe hook to keep me pulled in. So yeah. be a, a good climbing partner and, um, you know, don't just shower them with beta. But if they're struggling with it, you know, offer because you're seeing the direction they may not be. Um, but yeah. The other takeaway, keep those external rotators nice and strong. Keep those hips mobile and do those Nordic hamstring curls. Mm. Nordies! Nordies. <gasps> Favorite! Yeah. Hand bones! No. <laughs> Should be in the middle, but mostly close to me. It's mostly close to you. What are Is you it? doing? Yeah. It looked like it's closer to you. <laughs> no, it definitely was like. It looks so far from me right now. Now it feels like, look at this is coming down right here. It's a re-recording. Yeah. Hi. Okay. <laughs> uh, if there's a climb that you want, <laughs> why did I wait? Wait, bye. <laughs> bye. Like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. So lame, dude. So lame. I thought it was pretty good.